These are the devices, in my opinion, that the hobbyist or enthusiast miner needs to be looking at right now on getting into if they plan to mine in the future. Before that, this video brought to you by the Opal Nugget Ice Maker, because until I get a real sponsor, I'm just going to promote things that I like. Link in the description below. And what is up guys, Technicals here coming at you with something a little bit different today. I'm sort of breaking my silence. The market is severely depressed and we're starting to see the emotions really ramp up. People really getting sort of jaded against cryptocurrency, mining especially, selling off their rigs, talking about it, saying that they're never coming back, so on and so forth. You're not going to hear me doing any of that. And while, uh, sure, I've got emotions, unfortunately, like uh, every other human, um, I'm not going to be selling my GPUs. First and foremost, I did want to illustrate to you guys, uh, you do have options. If you want to sell your GPUs, then do it. Uh, I'd recommend selling it for a cryptocurrency. If you think cryptocurrency is going to uh, at least double or perhaps triple, um, that's not a good thing to put in the video technicals. If you think cryptocurrency is going to double or triple, uh, then it probably would maybe be a good option to sell your GPUs and then just hold on to that cryptocurrency, maybe wait for it to go back up, and then that $200 that you sold it for is now worth four or 600 It would be wrong of me to uh, keep fluffing the virtues of GPU mining to everybody uh, with everything that I've seen looking into FPGAs, ASICs, being in, having been in mining specifically now for a year proper. Um, it seems apparent to me that uh, GPU mining is, again, I've said many times, going the way of CPU mining. It's still going to be around. It's always going to be a thing. But are we ever going to uh, uh, see the levels that we once saw? Probably not. And I think there are only two scenarios under which that profits will return to GPU mining. One, during a bull run. Because during a bull run, everybody's a genius. Everybody's profitable. Uh, and then it's very easy to uh, to say whatever you're doing is the magic method, the secret sauce. It's because everybody uh, is going up. In a high tide, all boats rise. Second, speculative-based mining. If you're mining something that just came out, uh, certainly you're going to be able to accumulate a lot of those coins uh, during, the, uh, during the first few uh, uh, months or so of that coin with GPU mining. And if that coin takes off and goes, goes to the moon, then yeah, sure, it's going to absolutely have made sense to be into GPU mining. But again, those types of situations are very rare. So what am I getting at? You saw the thumbnail. You saw the title. Uh, am I a FPGA boy now? Kind of, sort of a little bit. Now, I'm still going to GPU mine, certainly. I'm still going to ASIC mine, certainly. Uh, but I think there's been a lot over the past year of people who want to fight this war against ASICs, uh, against large centralized powers controlling the uh, proof-of-work mining scene for many of these coins. GPUs, I'm just not, they're just not up to the task. Uh, I, I want to break this down into two sort, of, uh, two sort of categories real quick. First of all, you have uh, items that are made for mining. Right now, this consists of application-specific integrated circuits, ASICs. Uh, you're all familiar with them, uh, what they look like, what they do, the kind of performance that they can get, and then everything else, things that are not made specifically for mining that people use to mine cryptocurrency. This could be anything. This could be a CPU. Uh, this could be, could be an FPGA, GPUs, certainly, your refrigerator, your mobile phone, whatever processors are contained within those can in some way be used to mine cryptocurrency. Uh, these things are not made for it. ASICs are, and that's why they're so much more powerful at doing it. And this is the very unique thing that FPGAs can or cannot do. They can do whatever they want. They're the most flexible a piece of hardware that I've really found. They're able to flux. They're able to morph and evolve and go wherever you need them to go. Field programmable gate arrays. Programmable field in the field in real time whatever you need them to do so long as you have a proper bit stream to do it whatever application that you're after you program the fpga to do it the one thing that keeps most people in my opinion regular folks like us from getting into asics aside from the price aside from the price is that they are locked into mining that one particular algorithm for their foreseeable future once you get an asic it doesn't change you can upgrade firmware and things like that and tweak out a little bit of extra performance but you're set on that algorithm and you're basically set on the amount of hash rate that you're going to get. A lot of people, that turns them off to ASICs because what if something happens to that algorithm? What if something changes? Case in point, Monero. Monero is the largest coin or was the largest coin on Kryptonite. The ASICs came out. Kryptonite said, go fork yourself. And they're off onto Kryptonite V7 and eventually Kryptonite V8. They've got it built into their model to keep forking. 
And so they're not going to be targeted, in my opinion, by ASICs here in the future because they have that built in. Why would you go after a coin that you know is going to keep jumping? But it's not enough. ASICs have taken over. They did take over. They're here. They're the dominant force. And we've got players like Bitmain, who are super large, behind them, again, further adding to the centralization of the entire ecosystem. Meanwhile, GPU miners, we have combined a lot of hash power, but it's really inconsistent. It wasn't made to, to mine cryptocurrency. And in the event the market goes down, a lot of people just quit mining. And that's not good for a coin's network because, again, they want that hash power. They want to secure their network. Right now, as hash rates fall, these coins become much more susceptible to attack because not as many people are on the network securing it, which leads them into looking at options about uh, being uh, ASIC secured, perhaps going to a master node or proof of, uh, proof of stake instead of proof of work. This is where I think FPGAs are just absolutely going to kill it because you're going to get the efficiency, the power of an ASIC, and you're going to get the flexibility of a GPU. And if you want to purpose it for something else, you can do that too. These are the devices, in my opinion, that the hobbyist or enthusiast miner needs to be looking at right now on getting into if they plan to mine in the future. Look, we all bought a bunch of GPUs. I'm man enough to admit I overextended on GPU mining, absolutely. But yeah, that was the time. That was the, uh, the hype. Everybody got caught up in it. You got to admit mistakes when you made mistakes. I do feel I overextended. I'm looking into the other options, and right now I see that as FPGAs. As far as the price of FPGAs go, I don't think that's something really anyone needs to be concerned about because people don't bat an eye about building a 6 1080 Ti rig for several thousand dollars when you could get an FPGA that does the work of 20 1080 Ti's for the same amount. I, I don't think the price comparison or being sh uh, sticker shocked by FPGA is really the appropriate reaction. Uh, perhaps because people, you know, see the upfront price and they're always looking for the cheapest thing on the menu. We've done, gone through that before. It can't be a mining rig unless it's got like six or like 20 cars. I also see FPGAs evening the playing field, and this is going to sound a little crazy, but with Bitmain right now, they're the big super giant player. Uh, we don't know exact figures, but we know that Bitmain has a ton of ASICs that they control directly. It's their ASICs, not the ones that uh, people are operating that are just from Bitmain. I'm talking about the ones that they themselves operate. We, uh, we speculate, and news articles speculate on the internet, that Bitmain is approaching uh, controlling 50% of Bitcoin's network hash rate. They have a ton of Bitcoin cash, so on and so forth. The centralization of Bitmain is a tremendous vulnerability to Bitcoin, to uh, cri other cryptocurrencies that they hash on. And so when we look at what a comparable power would be in the FPGA realm, if we all move to FPGAs, well, is some new company going to come up that makes FPGAs and they're going to centralize because they have all these FPGAs that they're mining on? Uh, no, I don't think that's going to happen at all because currently Xilinx and Intel are the only big players that are manufacturing large quantities of FPGAs. I don't see either of them really becoming interested in cryptocurrency. I don't see any large player being able to get in a ton of FPGAs and set them all up in these giant warehouses, these networks, just like they do ASICs, and get them going. I'm sure there's a way to do it. Eventually, they're going to be able to tie all these things together and, and create large farms with them. Uh, but you're going to run into the same issue that you do with large GPU farms. Uh, it takes a lot of time to set up a large GPU farm versus an ASIC farm. An ASIC farm, you plug, you plug the thing in and you configure it and you're done in like 30 seconds, a minute. Versus a GPU farm, it takes a ton of time, a ton of maintenance. It's, it's, it's a total and complete pain in the ass to set up a large GPU farm. I know that just from setting up a small GPU farm. You gotta fuss with these things, you gotta worry about fans and risers and all these moving parts and components and airflow. It's just so much. So setting up a large FPGA operation, I feel it's going to run into a lot of those same issues. I'm sure someone's going to fly in and develop some sort of uh, management program, back-end program, like Simple Mining, but for FPGAs. Uh, and if they do, that'd be great. It's still not going to be allow these giant players with $100 million to play around with to set up an FPGA farm that quickly. It's going to happen, yeah, uh, but it's not going to be nearly as easy as an ASIC farm, which further centralizes things, which makes it that much easier. So I see FPGAs evening out the playing field. If you're an enthusiast, a hobbyist miner, you're in this for the foreseeable future. You're not as impacted or as emotional as a lot of people who maybe got into cryptocurrency mining. 
uh, then I think you need to seriously take a look at FPGAs. Right now, it's not so great to get in on them. There's not a ton of support. There's not a ton of bit streams that come out. If you got questions, then it's a very small select community of people who are going to be able to address it. There's not a lot of YouTube videos on it. Uh, it's a new and emerging thing, but I see this as the one thing that we can use to combat and win the war on ASICs, bring decentralization back to proof-of-work mining for regular people to do it. Now, it's it's tough to, to really reconcile, like, well, technicals, you're saying regular people, uh, not regular people can't afford a $4,000 uh, card. Well, yeah, but regular people don't buy six 1080 Ti's either. Um, we're not regular people, but we've got to keep up. If you're a hobbyist, an enthusiast, you're going to have to keep up. You're going to have to evolve. Now, what about programs like programmatic proof of work being put out by Oh God, a company? I think those are still great. It's still a step in the right direction on the side of miners. And I know a lot of people give criticism to minority and Oh God, a company saying that, you know, they're, they're, they're somehow up to something or, you know, programmatic proof of work or uh, they're doing these things just to make money. Like, well, I, I would hope that they make money because they're not going to continue to work if they don't. Big criticism is that they're going to be running uh, future things through their mining program of some sort. So what? I, I mean, do you need it to be open source? Do you need it to be free or something like that? Do you demand that no one else make money? I don't get that mentality myself personally. I still think things like programmatic proof of work are a step in the right direction, especially if they can lobby large coins to go onto it like Ethereum. Uh, but I'm not going to hold my breath. I'm not going to hold out for that because, you know, it's questionable as to whether or not that's going to happen. So technical, should I sell out everything right now and go buy all the FPGAs I can? Probably not. Don't do that. That's probably not a good idea. I think selling your GPUs right now, it's so funny to me because I've been in cryptocurrency a year and you see the meme over and over again, uh, buy high, sell low. Ha ha ha. Super funny. People do it. They're actually doing it. Why didn't you sell all your GPUs at 6,000? Why are you selling it at 4,000? If you think cryptocurrency is going to 1,000 or you think cryptocurrency is going to 10,000, either way, to me personally, it makes sense to wait because so many people are selling right now, knee jerk, emotional after this market drop, selling off the GPUs. You're going to see within this flood of supply, a, a surge uh, in supply again, and so prices are going to be suppressed. Does it not make sense to wait until things are boring and stable in the cryptocurrency markets to then sell your GPUs and get a little bit of a premium on them? Uh, you know, maybe you could sell it now again just to get cryptocurrency uh, that goes up in value. Uh, but right now, I, the, the last thing you want to do is sell your stuff when everybody else is doing it. And again, I can't tell anyone who needs to finance their day to day operations, pay their bills, what have you to hold on to things and wait for something to go up because no one knows what it's going to do except the predictor. And so, uh, you know, I can't tell you and I'm not going to suggest that you sell and hold on to cryptocurrency or you hang on to your GPUs or do any of that stuff because your unique situation is yours and you're the only one who's going to be able to know how to handle it. I'm not going to stop making GPU content, uh, but I do feel the FPGAs are the way forward. So long as we can continue development, making new bit streams. And number two, and most importantly, make it easy. It doesn't seem to me that there's this big sense of urgency to make FPGA mining accessible for the average person. You don't see uh, the, a nice hash for FPGAs. Uh, with the Black Miner F1 that I have coming in very, very soon, I have a lot of high hopes for this thing because of its easy to use dashboard on the back end. But I want to see more of a sense of urgency in making FPGA mining very, very easy. I'm, th I'm talking like one click, make a nice hash for FPGAs. You make that, tons of people are going to run out and buy FPGAs, I guarantee it. Stop! Before you get into the comments and start railing on me for being against GPUs, consider what I said. i really like you to consider it. You know, do you think absolutely that GPU mining is, is the only way to do it because it's the entry level for most people? I think there's probably a lot of emotion being thrown into the, the comments about GPU mining and sort of hanging on there. Again, I'm going to continue to GPU mine because uh, a lot of people bought it. Uh, a lot of people have GPU mine, mining rigs and so forth and just don't want to accept that GPU mining is not going to come back to the levels that it once was. I'm not saying it's dead. Uh, not at all. But I don't think it's going to be back to those levels unless under those two previous circumstances. Um, so what do you think? Do you think uh, for real that GPU mining is going to return and that with GPU mining, we would be able to cumulatively overtake ASIC miners or bring them down in some other way 
via programmatic proof of work or some other means? Is it GPU accelerated by FPGA cards like Acorns and things like that? Is there a homeostasis there to be had? Um, or is it just, uh, are we just on a downward spiral that's going to eventually be overtaken by ASICs and then quantum computing? I don't know. I want to know what you know, though, in the comments below. And these comments are important, guys, because I learned about the Black Miner F1 through my YouTube comments. Wasn't even on my radar. Someone said, uh, check out this, uh, this FPGA mining thing. And I went over there and I bought one within a couple days. So thanks and big shout out. I don't know if I can find the comment. If I can find the comment, I'm going to put it right here. Thank you. And uh, so again, if you know of a miner that's coming out, some other piece of tech that's coming out that's uh, of note that you should, uh, that I should be putting here on the channel, let me know in the comments below. Links in the description below to everything we talked about here today. Don't forget to check out our Discord, subscriberpool.com, and the Twitter. I'm the Technicals. See you next time.